Hey, what's up guys? It's Jack and welcome back to another video. And this video topic in particular was inspired by Drifter's video because there was something in his video that he stated earlier today. And by the way, I'm going to leave a link in the description of that video down below that uh, I didn't know. I mean, I would love, I would have loved to, 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 to have known about this. And, but the thing is, I just didn't believe it and I didn't know it. And that is the fact that your casuals, like your normal everyday people, are aware of skill-based matchmaking forward slash engagement optimized matchmaking. Now, I've, in his video, he talks about that in his personal experience and how it was like, whoa. And then there was even a little bit of a brief interaction between myself and Drifter on, on Twitter. Um, I, I basically tweeted out that video because I thought it was a great video, gave him his, his, his props, and I told him how I just didn't you know, I didn't know that the casuals of the casual would know about skill-based matchmaking or engagement-optimized matchmaking or whatnot, but apparently they do, which is great because this means that all of these years that we've been putting into making videos, you know, and, and other forms of social media or whatnot talking about the subject, it has gotten to the point to where it, the message has gotten across and it's reached the depths of the casual player. It's gone so far that it's reached... It's within reach of the casual player. Now, obviously, I don't know exactly what the percentage of those casuals are, but I'm guessing it's pretty significant. And this also reinforces the, a video topic that I made months ago talking about how your average player today is better than what your average player was, you know, years ago. And on top of that, like everybody right now is just so invested in social media than what they were before, right? It's kind of like how gaming itself used to be back in the day to where if you were a gamer, it was kind of like you were looked down upon, you were shunned away or whatnot, people would dismiss you. And nowadays it's a lot more accepted than what it was back then. And when you look at the, the, how progress uh, kind of happens with that change, obviously your your average player is going to be better, right? And and people are not going to be like as casual anymore. I mean, they still be will be casual, but they spent a significant amount of time playing to where, hey, they'll know what they're doing. They'll know their basics when it comes to, you know, a certain game, whether it's single player, or multiplayer, or whatever it is. And you see and feel that difference when you play the game. And uh, I really liked what he had to say in terms of, you know, giving X Defiant its props about its matchmaking system and stuff like that. And, uh, I, you know, again, me being Team X Defiant, I'm really looking forward to where X Defiant is going to be in, in the near future. I think, uh, and I thought about this earlier as well that I wanted to share with you. I think, uh, like, they're, you know how every month we're going to be getting a new map? I think that when we do get a new map every new month, we're also going to be getting an additional like big update with that new map releasing as well, I think. Uh, you know, to where every four weeks, not only are we getting a new map, but we're going to get additional little fixes to the netcode and stuff like that. I think that that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to see in patch notes, in future patch notes, so to speak, we're going to be seeing an additional map added on, maybe a little bit of rebalancing with the factions and stuff like that, and the net code being worked on. And uh, obviously we know that Mark Rubin and his team are also going to be uh, transparent and giving us feedback when it comes to that. And I really look forward to what the game is going to be like in the future because I, for one, have been putting a lot of time into the game. I'm really enjoying the game. And of course, I'm enjoying getting to that other side of improving with the game. And by the way, shout out to a few of you guys in the comment section that have been giving me uh, your classes in terms of a few of your setups and talking to me about spawns and stuff like that because the spawns are not exactly like how Call of Duty spawns are or even alt other multiplayer shooters to where, you know, uh, like where your team is, you, the enemy team is going to be where you your team isn't it's not entirely like that it's not like if you're in if your team is going to be on the uh, uh let's say southeast part of the map you know they're going to be on the northwest or something like that it's uh it's not in entirely like that it's it's different because when i start you know using the the call of duty mentality to where i start heading following those rules i a lot of times i don't find anybody so it's like you know some of you guys have been uh, you know one of you guys in particular was trying to trying to tell me that it was a lot like battlefield or whatnot or something like that to where you know it's a little bit different but uh, but again i'm still learning as time goes on i'm still adjusting as time goes on and there are improvements that are continuing to be made and i love it that's one of the things that I love X Defiant is that it's truly an organic experience and it gives me the opportunity to get better through time invested into the game and adjustments made and, you know, the adaptation phase to where, you know, it takes time, you know, and, and, and this is a true scientific fact, you know, because I was, uh, what's it called a, uh, a certified personal trainer. And one of the things that they talk about when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, 
the body adapting is, and this works for the mind as well, is the adaptation phase. And depending on the person, as well as other factors such as health, age, and all that kind of stuff, the adaptation phase could take anywhere from four to 12 weeks on average. Some people, maybe a little bit more depending on circumstances, and other people that are really gifted, maybe a little bit less. So uh, obviously there are a few outliers on both sides of the spectrum, but at the end of the day, you know, we all have an adaptation phase to kind of go through. And when you have an organic, organic experience where that skill-based matchmaking or engagement optimized matchmaking is not in your algorithm when it comes to the matchmaking system, you literally have every single opportunity to enjoy the game in its full and what i mean by that is like when you do make it to the other side and you do get better which happens naturally um and you adapt and you learn how to play properly and you discover all these things and, and you put in the time and effort into it what ends up happening is your reward is going to be that much better than let's say the algorithm that is there to quote unquote hold you by the hand or protect you or whatnot, which is something you really don't need. Uh, it doesn't matter what skill level you are, no matter how low or how high you are, you don't need that algorithm in there because you're naturally going to find, you know, a few good players, a few bad players, and a few in betweens in pretty much your average lobby, so to speak. Sure, a few times you'll have a few bot lobbies, so to speak, to where ever like the vast majority of players. Uh, are going to be fairly new and they're going through the very beginning phases of the adaptation phase to where you are way far ahead and therefore you're going to whoop on them and then of course at the same time you're going to be on the opposite end like you might even like me for instance when i posted in my community tab uh, a screenshot of me running into you know a party of at least four to where they completely beat the crap out of my team and then here i was just trying to play casually or whatnot using an lmg on the new map and uh, they just absolutely whooped the crap out of us. And I was like, yep, I ran into this. But does that happen often? Do I run into full stack teams like that often? No, I do not. And I play at degenerative hours, so to speak, as I say that, you know, with uh, with a sense of humor in mind. Because, like, right now, as, of, as I'm recording this, it is 5, 17 a.m. in the morning. And I just got done playing a three-hour session of X Defiance, so to speak. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I, and, and in this particular session, I have not run into any... Uh, any full parties oh hold on let me think for a second uh no and if and if it was maybe it was one game because there was one particular score that was quite a difference but i would say it was only like one game out of the whole three hours go figure and everything else was pretty you know pretty uh pretty even steven across the board so um so when you have an organic experience man it just makes the experience that much better you know it gives you the opportunity to get better and to and to reap the rewards and you'll never experience that if you're held by the hand, to be honest. It's no different than riding a bike. If you always have your training wheels on that bike, you're never going to be truly riding the bike. Because I can remember, like, as if it was yesterday, when I was seven years old or so, when I first learned how to ride a bike, I did the training wheel thing. And then eventually they took the training wheels off. You know, and when they took the training wheels off, I was like, what the heck? You know, this is like, you know, it's like, what the what do those training wheels do anyway? Those, those things were no good for anything, you know, and I had to go through what I had to go through in order to how to learn how to ride a bike. And when I did, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was great. So, um, and I quickly realized, you know, that it's like those training wheels were pretty much useless <laughs> because I was, after I spent so much time with those training wheels, it's like I still was falling on my ass, so to speak. So I, I had to, I had to take a different approach. So it, it is what it is, man. You know, obviously, you know, you can have, you know, a, a guardian or whatnot kind of, you know, hold the bike up from, from the back or whatnot to kind of help you, which is actually even more useful. But at the end of the day, you're you're going to be riding on your own, and that's how you learn, ultimately. So the true way to learn is by actually not having skill-based matchmaking or engagement-optimized matchmaking in uh, in public matches. It's simple as that. And 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 the, the kind of matchmaking that a lot of games have, you know, when it comes to this algorithm that a lot of these games have, whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's Apex Le Legends, uh, Fortnite, or whatnot, Halo, you know. Uh, but let's let's you know, since I'm more familiar with the Call of Duty version, let's just say that you know call of duty's version is like it's kind of like you always have those training wheels on so to speak right and, and at certain points you know it's even worse than that so it's like you know you got to have that experience you know it'll never let you you know reap the rewards it's never gonna it's gonna hold you back whenever you're starting to do better and it's gonna uh you know uh do a lot of things for you when uh when you've gotten you know too many hard matches or whatnot so it's a very it's a very manipulative experience and and so it's it is what it is but but ultimately i just kind of wanted to share that to share this video with you as well as a little brief conversation because i mean i did not know that casuals knew um and in drifter's video and i'm gonna let 
him speak uh, for himself. When you guys click on his video, you'll see it. But he, uh, you know, he he actually mentions a few legitimate experiences to where he was talking to everyday people about video games. And when they when the subject of, you know, uh, I think Call of Duty came along and they were they were like, yeah, it's like a, I don't like skill based matchmaking or something like that. I mean, hell, I've even had casual players come into my uh, uh, comment section, my videos, whenever I do make a video talking about this. And even they will say, the majority of them at least, you know, there's been a few players that say I need it, but there, there's the majority of them were like, I don't like skill-based matchmaking and I'm a casual and my stats are such and such and I don't like skill-based matchmaking. It's simple as that. So, um, and again, like I said, no matter how low skilled you are, how high skilled you are, you don't need that algorithm in the match. And it's not even legit skill-based matchmaking either. The legit skill-based matchmaking is when you start getting into ranked games, you know, uh, to where, you know, wins and losses matter and you're going to be paired against other players that are of that rank that have won and lost as much as you have, uh, give or take a few here and there. And that's pretty much it. You know, that's that's legit skill-based matchmaking. You know, the kind of algorithm that you're dealing with in casual playlists is much, much worse, you know. Uh, and trust me, I've even heard Halo players, pros themselves, say that, like, whenever they play pubs, in halo before they go on to play ranked or whatnot that their experience is so much worse than even ranked and those guys are high ranking ranked players you know they're the highest of the high so but anyway guys uh yeah i just kind of wanted to make this video and you know give my give my props to drifter and it was a great video uh, i highly recommend you guys watch it and i he again like i said he praises x defiant and he would love x defiant uh, x defiant's matchmaking system to be in in call of duty but uh, that's, again, even he mentions that that's unlikely to happen. But if it were to happen, you know, he gives a few words in terms of what he thinks it could do for gaming and for the game of Black Ops 6 as well. So because at the end of the day, if your game in and of itself is good, right, if, if your modes in your game is good, if your multiplayer is good, if your zombies is good, if, if all that is good, right, your, your war zone, you name it, right, if all of it is good. And, you know, if you think about it, you really don't need that algorithm in the first place. You know what I mean? Because it's good and the players will come back and play. I know this because back in the day, no matter how bad I got whooped at a game, and I was one of the worst multiplayer players ever, right? But it didn't matter. You know why? Because I enjoyed the experience of what the game had to offer. It felt good to play a game, to play the game. It felt good to get kills. It felt good to, you know, unlock the challenges and 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 try out new guns and, and work for camos and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't care about how good or bad I did. I cared about the fact that I enjoyed the living hell out of the game. And I, it would be years before I got better at multiplayer shooters. It would be years. My best friends, if they were doing commentaries along with me on this one right now, they'll tell you. I was like, in the very beginning, I was somewhere average, middle of the pack. But then after everybody else started getting better, I was still the wor I was still like where I was previously. I ended up, and I ended up becoming one of the worst players. You know what I mean? I didn't get better for years later, but I didn't care because I was enjoying myself playing the game. No matter how good or bad I played. Obviously, if you play good, you're going to get even more of a satisfying experience. But at the end of the day, I just was, I just wanted the experience in the first place. I wanted the thrill of being able to get that kill or to, you know, get, uh, you know, pick up a weapon and, and get a kill with it and, and or unlock challenges and stuff like that. You know, it was that experience of playing with other people that did it for me. So um and it felt good just to be able to run around shoot your gun and even getting in those gunfights even if you were to lose you're still getting a dopamine effect because it's like oh man that was close but i still lost you know what i mean so it's like you were always getting something out of it and that's because the game in and of itself was good so at its core you know without that damn algorithm call of duty is actually good especially with this new Treyarch game coming up it's it's got all the capabilities of being good a lot of you have good feelings about it so you know um so it just goes to show you, man, you just really don't need an algorithm like that into the game. But anyway, uh, this commentary went on a little bit longer than I had expected. Um, even though I stayed within the subject, I went on a little bit of a tangent. So, but, um, but sometimes, you know, when you don't script your commentaries and you get into a discussion like this, this is, this is what happens. So, but with that being said, I really love to know down in the comment section, uh, what are your opinions? You know, what generation of games do you come from? Uh, what are your thoughts on skill-based matchmaking, forward slash engagement, optimized matchmaking? And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on X Defiance matchmaking system, you know, and stuff, like, which is only going to improve, by the way, uh, you know, because we're still in the beginning stages. Uh, the disbanding lobbies is going to stop in a future update. So we're, a lot of people are waiting for that. But with that being said, I really like to know what what you guys think and what your experiences are, as always, you know, because it's not just about me here. It's about the community. So with that being said, I like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch and or listen. 
Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.